Good afternoon and welcome to the DFS Army YouTube channel. I am Res11 and you can find me on X at Res11 Grinds. Going to take a look at some pitching for today, the 4th of September. It is Wednesday already. Uh, we do have a 10 game main slate ahead of us and I do believe we do not have any weather to worry about. I think the only thing that we need to look into at some point is uh, the wind at Wrigley. Um, with that said, reminder this is a first look at pitching options. Uh, I'll be looking at DraftKings as that is where a majority of my action is. If you do play on FanDuel, I would cut my pool into about a half or even a third, as you do not have to be as creative. Uh, pricing isn't as tight. Scoring system's different. Uh, really allowing us to pay, focus on the, the big-time upside pitchers. But let's dig in here on DraftKings. We get Sonny Gray, somebody who... I haven't been able to get right in the second half of the season. Um, coming off of a great start against San Diego. And even when you say a great start, he only put up less than 22 fantasy points. Strikeouts weren't there. Obviously, San Diego doesn't strike out a whole lot. Um, but he's just somebody that's been tough to figure out. Second half just hasn't been very good for Sonny Gray. Uh, anyways. CRA is all the way up to almost four on the season. Um, he had one excellent start against the Brewers and then one pretty bad one. Uh, the one thing he's been able to do in those starts is rack up strikeouts. I'm not really sure how I feel about going to him. He is a slight dog. Uh, Milwaukee's minus 122 favorite. Game total of just seven and a half. K prop sitting at six and a half with juice on the under. Um, I think he's going to make the pool, but he's kind of somebody that I'd, I'd prefer to find a way to, to get away from, I think, at this point. I just don't like the the way things have trended for him, obviously, in the second half. Uh, his road numbers have been atrocious, giving up a bunch of home runs, which isn't a normal thing for Sonny Gray. Uh, he's a bigger strikeout guy this year than I would have thought. Um, so I guess he does have the upside if he is... If he is sharp this evening, but um, I'm not overly excited. He's probably going to end up in the pool just because of, you know, I did scroll through this before I started recording. Um, we don't really have a ton of slam dunk pitching options, at least in, in my mind. So uh, next on the list will be Shota Imanaga. Shut down the Pirates the first time he faced them. He's been at his best from a fantasy standpoint when pitching at home. Huge difference in Ks, a uh, huge difference in walks when pitching at home. Pretty important for us. Um, it's now making me want to bring up some weather on my other screen. But Imanaga definitely has K upside. It's not wasn't known as a huge K guy coming into the major into majors. Um, so that has been a a nice bonus. Um, as far as the game line goes, he's a minus 205 favorite. Game total of eight. Uh, with that total, I'm going to guess there's not really any wind going on. It's K prop sitting at six and a half with juice on the under. Um, taking a look at our weather station, does look like we do have some wind blowing in from right field uh, at 10 miles an hour. I don't think that's a big thing for him, considering we should see a very right hand heavy. Pittsburgh lineup, um, but obviously something to pay attention to. I think Shota, certainly uh, the best of the the three spend-up options. I would put Kirby ahead of him, even though Oakland has been uh, annoying us with their performances. But uh, Imanaga, definitely going to be somebody we want to utilize. Vivalde struggled against the Yankees first time he faced them. He has been best when at home. Coming off of an elite performance, but that was against the White Sox. I don't know that we can put much weight into that. Um, and actually, his two best performances all year have come against the White Sox. That's a little annoying to see. The game right now is a pick em, which is kind of shocking. Game total of 8.5. K-prop of 5.5, which is on the over. Uh, that K-prop is intriguing in this spot. Uh pretty solid juice on the over as well so man I, it's not that i want to pick on the yankees with pitching but 
We did see Haney have quite a bit of success last night. Uh, I mean, it still is a tough lineup to to navigate, but uh, I suppose it does help when Soto and Judge are kind of struggling a little bit. So I think we're going to go with Ivalde, and I actually might put him ahead of Sonny Gray, which is weird to, to say considering I think the Yankees lineup is far more dangerous than the Brewers. George Kirby probably going to draw quite a bit of ownership. Dominated Oakland the first time he faced him. He is a pretty strong splits guy, and he's been much worse on the road. Obviously something to pay attention to. Home runs jump up drastically went on the road. He's coming off of a terrible start. He's actually been pretty bad in three out of his last four. Uh, four out of his last six, roughly. Uh, this start wasn't all that great either, but um, there's some trends here that aren't exciting. His K-Prop is just six and a half with juice on the under, which is kind of shocking considering Oakland can strike out plenty. Uh, thing is, obviously, his Ks have trended down uh, over the last month. So that's something to pay attention to as well. Vegas line, he is a minus 148 favorite. Game total of 7.5 with juice on the under in that as well. Uh, Kirby, somebody we are going to use. Uh, but much like Sonny Gray, somebody that i just not a fan of the trends. Um, you know, as the season worn down, pitchers do wear down even more. Um, Gray's had some injury history in his career. Uh, Kirby being a younger guy can certainly wear down uh, as the season goes on, but there's still a couple guys that have, you know, arguably the highest ceiling range on the slate, so we do want to utilize them. Um, but it might be there might be two guys we don't want to go super heavy on. Seth Lugo has actually thrown the ball really well against Cleveland this year. Hasn't been at his best one at home. But uh, he's been strong against Cleveland. 27 plus fantasy points, two out of his last three starts uh, is always key. Recent performances work out nice. He is a minus 135 favorite. Game total is 8.5. K prop is just 4.5 with juice on the under. Uh, that's a big thing. He has had strikeout success against Cleveland. But in general, they are not a strikeout team. He did have 10 in one of his starts, uh, 5 in the other. Uh, so one really amazing start against them, and then one not-so-good start. Uh, the amazing start did come at home, coincidentally. Uh, I think I want to use Lugo, but again, there are some things holding me back from going super heavy, and it's obviously the opponent not being a huge strikeout team. Now, Cleveland could be without Josh Naylor. Uh, takes a dangerous bat away from the middle of their lineup. Uh, if Naylor were to be out, I think, Lugo would get a slight bump as well. Um, but so far, you know, it's, it's really Imanaga and then four guys that have some question marks around them that we are going to utilize. Um, kind of the story of the slate, to be honest. Tanner Hulk, huge first half. Not the greatest second half, I don't believe. He's had a couple of decent starts recently, coming off of probably his best start of the second half. Um, might be, yeah, this was right before the All-Star break, I think. Um, so definitely off off of his best start of the second half. Uh, his two best starts in the second half have come in his last three starts. They were both on the road, which is definitely something to pay attention to. His overall numbers are better when on the road. Strikeouts are even better uh, when on the road as well. I haven't been picking on the Mets a ton with pitching. And I'm not sure I'm going to end up there with Hulk, but his K-Prop's at 5.5 with juice on the under. He is a slight dog. Game total just 7.5 on this one. Um, certainly somebody I'm interested in. Because I do think there is enough upside for him to be, you know, an SP1 on this slate. Um, but right now, I would be leaning towards maybe going elsewhere. Um, especially with the two guys under him here. Uh, and maybe a third in Darvish. I don't know what he did in his rehab or anything. Um, so it'll be interesting to find out. But uh, Hulk might end up on the outside looking in. 
Zach Allen, somebody I love using when at home, but he is on the road. But he's pitching in a park that I love using pitchers in. So what gives in this scenario? Wasn't overly sharp against San Francisco the first time he faced them, uh, which came in San Francisco. Was roughed up his last start, but the start prior to that in Boston, he dominated uh, a difficult Boston lineup. Uh, so that's something to really be interested in, uh, going on the road in Boston and doing that that job. Um, he is a minus 135 favorite. His K prop sitting at five and a half, which juiced very strongly on the over. Gallon's going to end up one of my highest owned pitchers, most likely. You know, I, I do have reservations. He's just one of those guys that I always worry about using when on the road. Charlie Morton, probably the highest owned pitcher on the slate. Uh, we're picking on Colorado with pitching. It, it's just something we do. We've been doing all season. We're going to keep doing. Uh, he definitely has some ability to to struggle, um, but K prop of six and a half juices on the over. Is minus two ninety favorite. Things just line up for him to be, you know, everybody's de facto SP one uh, or favorite SP. Probably turns out to be the SP two, but by the time scoring's done tonight, just because I, I mean, I don't. It's not that he's bad. I just don't know that he has you know, a 35-plus in him, the way that he's pitched this year. He certainly has plenty of 25-30s to 30s in him. Um, but if we see some big upside from a pitcher tonight, I would guess that it's not for Morton. And then he ends up the, the SB2 in a winning lineup. But uh, certainly Morton going to be highly owned for good reason. Um, so Darvish threw 66 pitches in a simulated game. Um, I don't think I'm going to go there. Uh, my guess is we see somewhat limited. San Diego has a pretty strong bullpen right now, so I don't know that they need to force Darvish to get out there and go, you know, five or six innings. Um, seeing him get through four would probably be a win for San Diego, so I'm just not sure that I want to get there. Colin Ray somebody that we've used a little bit, but I don't think I'm getting there. Uh, he's been roughed up in three out of his last four starts from a run standpoint. He did shut down St. Louis at one point. Allowed a ton of base runners, but I was good enough to get out of it. J.P. Sears, somebody that I am going to use. Uh, Seattle strikes out a ton. Was strong against him the first time he faced him. His home numbers haven't been as good, but uh, in four of his last six starts, he's been really strong. So I am going to incorporate J.P. Sears a decent amount into my pool. Domingo Homan. Probably not getting there. He did have an impressive performance against Texas. But uh, Chicago's offense had been pretty decent of late. So uh, probably not going to go there. I think the only other guy down here that I'm really considering right now uh, is going to be Bobby Miller. He has not been sharp. There's a lot of risk to it. He did strike out nine two starts ago. Um, but he is taking on a weak Angel squad. Uh, his first start of the year back in March, you see what his upside is. Getting him at this price with some upside, I'm interested. He's a minus 205 favorite. Now, shockingly, this game has a total of 10. An Angels home game has a total of 10. That's pretty strong. So, um, a lot of these other guys I'm not really all that interested in. Lively has had some success this season. I'm just not in a hurry to use him. I just don't think he's going to put up a performance where we go, you know, at the end of the night, man, I wish I would have used Ben Lively. Uh, very similar with Stroman. He could have a solid performance, but I just don't know if he has the upside that we're looking for. So, but there we have it. There's our first look at pitching. If you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, get the alert anytime we drop videos here at DFS Army. If you want to join us and get access to our coaches, tools, sheets, Discord, etc., I will put links in the description below. You can use promo code RAZ, that's R-A-Z, for 10% off monthly. And as always, best of luck, everybody.